Welcome back to our non-stop coverage of Superstorm Sandy. This is a look at what some of the strong storms from this storm has done. A partial collapse of a frame here in Manhattan. Look at that. At the time of this initial report, we understood there were no injuries, but streets were cleared as a precaution. And, you know, the winds are still incredibly strong in this area, still a real concern, not only with the wind, but then we get into other parts of Manhattan, lower Manhattan, specifically around Battery Park City. And we are watching water rise rapidly. Jim Cantori is out there live. We'll have the latest in just a moment. Also, we're going to have the very latest on this partial crane collapse uh, in Actually, we do have that right now. We want to go to NBC's Rahima Ellis, who's live there with the very latest on this partial crane collapse. Thank you very much for joining us, Rahima. What can you tell us? What I can tell you is just in the last few minutes, we've started to see something that's very frightening, and that is the winds picked up, and so did this crane. It started swaying in the wind. One of the reasons that they have cordoned off this area is because authorities were fearful that they can happen. That could happen. So they set up what they called a collapse zone. No cars, no pedestrians. They've evacuated the apartment buildings, the commercial buildings, even the Park and Meridian Hotel. The guests have been moved to other hotels as a precaution to try to keep people in this area safe. They also had the specialists going up into this construction site of this one and a half billion dollar luxury high-rise building up that's going up in midtown Manhattan. They've got to go up, we're told, some 74 flights of stairs in order to see if there's anything they can do. But no one is betting that they can secure this thing under these conditions because the winds have been blowing so fiercely. That's NBC's Rahim Ellis. Thank you very much for that report. And of course, we're going to keep uh, you posted on the very latest with that saying that part of the area has been cleared out because they're afraid that we could see more of a collapse. And guests, uh, you know, moved from that area, staying in that high-rise building as a safety precaution. What we want to do right now is go right back to our senior hurricane specialist, Brian Norcross, for the latest on Superstorm Sandy. And a critical time, Brian, as we watch that water rise in many areas, including uh, Battery Park City. Yeah, we have this, uh, this wind direction change. So that's going to take some of the pressure off of Long Island Sound, but not all of it, because we've had this tremendous water move into Long Island Sound. That's on the north side of New York City, so that's pushing the water down the East River. Now it's going to switch around, and we get the water pushing on the south side of the city, and those two waterways actually meet there down at Battery Park City in the lower end of Manhattan. So how all this is exactly going to add up and come together it kind of remains to, to be seen. So we have a report that the first fatality of uh, Sandy has been reported uh, in Maryland. Uh, a, a person was killed in a car crash in uh, Montgomery County, uh, Maryland. Now, some other reports in uh, 75 mile an hour uh, winds uh, for the first hurricane force winds in the city officially reported at JFK. Uh, although a 100 mile per hour gust reported by the New York governor's office on the Triborough Bridge, that's the RFK Triborough Bridge that goes from LaGuardia into Manhattan, 100 mile an hour winds. They measure the winds on the bridge because the bridge is up over the river, obviously, so it's well elevated. So it's not like you would get at the surface, but they care about that because they don't allow any traffic on the bridge, so they closed that bridge. That was the only bridge open between Queens and Manhattan was that uh, Triborough Bridge, but now that is closed. We have the uh, water at Sandy Hook, New Jersey. Now, Sandy Hook is at the very top of New Jersey, outside of New York Harbor, 2.3 feet now above the record. So it's not 2.3 uh, feet above normal, it's 2.3 feet above the record. And uh, as we said before, Con Edison is turning off the power in uh, lower Manhattan. They're in that process of turning it off to protect the underground electrical system. Now reports coming in, reports of some cars underwater at Avenue C and 14th Street. That's in the East Village, so that's along the East River. So uh, in just a minute, I'll let me get a graphic up and we'll... We'll talk about that, but let's go over this water situation uh, in and around New York. And this is what, what we were fearful of, is the East River flooding. And so this uh, uh, flooding there in the East Village is from that. Okay, so here's the water rise right now, 7.7 uh, .7 feet at the battery. And that is water above normal, and then the tide is on top of that. And we have about another hour, almost exactly another hour to high tide. So uh, 
somewhere between a half a foot and a foot more tide to go, plus more push, unfortunately, from the storm. So we've got uh, between one and, and two or three feet of water yet to rise there. Look at these incredible numbers. This is water rise above normal, eight feet at the battery, 12.3 feet at Kings Point there. LaGuardia Airport is over here. Uh, Sandy Hook, there's Sandy Hook at uh, well above the all-time record for there. Uh, so this is uh, just more and more to come. Here are the highest of any locations above normal. There you see Kings Point on... Uh, uh, Kings Point there on Long Island Sound, Bridgeport, Connecticut, New Haven, Connecticut, and Sandy Hook, New Jersey. On the left side there, that is our live look at uh, Battery Park City as the water now coming in over the seawall and pushing uh, farther up. What, what we're waiting for are two things there to see just how high it gets, and that is this uh, tide coming in, just the plain old high tide rising up uh, another uh, something between six inches and a foot, and then we also have have the shifting wind direction. The wind at Newark Airport, which is kind of across the Hudson River there from Battery Park City, is still got a northerly kind of component, so it's still pushing the water out. So when that wind turns around, which it will this evening, becomes more of a southerly wind, then that is going to begin to enhance this storm surge. So hopefully that doesn't happen the next hour with the high tide, but we just can't be sure. This is, uh, we've got a long way to go here. See how exactly high that water goes. All right, Chris and Crystal, back to you. All right, thank you, Brian.